David? Yeah? Do you know where Davy's hero man is? He wants us to bring it to him tomorrow. Check his dresser, bottom drawer. It's the secret <sighs> snow fort. The password's Gingerick. David? Look at this. Your chocolate. I was looking for which ones to put in with her. I couldn't find them. He's keeping them. I miss him, David. I miss them both. I want my kids back. Andy thinks that child and family services are gonna approve of Rose to take David. I want him here. Yes. I'm John Waters of the Chicago Police. We don't have anything to say to you. Your attorneys hired me as an investigator. When Andy and Terry first came to me, even I was convinced of your guilt. But then I read through the stuff they gave me. And also, I gotta be honest with you. I've been observing you. Observing us? Watching, following. What right do you have? Not really. But it did convince me of your innocence. Oh, yeah, someone could definitely fit through there. Tell that to the cops. Yeah, well, they say it's unlikely someone would choose that, because there are two bigger windows back there that were unlocked. There's also a fence back there. Whereas here, you got easy street access, and you're hidden by the bushes. Now, if I were an intruder, this is exactly what I'd choose. In here, the evidence tech dusted the door, but nothing else in the room. Nothing else. He never dusted the back patio or basement doors or the stairway either, or the workroom, except for that window in there. Now, here. They call this a smudge. It's clearly a footprint. They also talk about an undisturbed layer of dust on the windowsill. It's not even mentioned in the original reports. No lift was ever made. The cops seriously botched this case. Well, why are they doing this to us? Hey, make no mistake. They really believe you did this. Their minds are made up. And when that happens, it's tunnel vision time. The night before Jacqueline disappeared, about a mile from here, Someone cut the screen of another sleeping seven-year-old girl and was coming through the window when her mother woke up and scared the guy away. Did you know that? No. Hmm. You really believe us, don't you? Yes, I do. Thank you. Oh, now, I'm afraid I've taken up enough of your time, and even if I haven't, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I got chemotherapy, the big C, colon. I'll root for you, you root for me. You said it was broken from the inside. We believed it was. And it's taken you two and a half months to figure out it was broken from outside? It was a complicated assembly. We made it our top priority. Look. We go by what you guys tell us. That's what I tell to Daly. 
And this case isn't exactly swimming in hard evidence. We can't have surprises like this. Now, is there anything else I should know about? So they went outside and did it. Well, if anyone sees them at the window, it's their own house. You questioning if they did it? I'm questioning what a jury is more likely to buy. This way makes them look more calculating. This works in our favor. Okay. Now, who's this John Waters? He's a detective with Chicago PD. He works on the side as a private investigator. Multiple commendations, good Catholic family man. He's a regular candidate for sainthood. One of his specialties is burglary, and he's putting word out that someone did come in through that window. Oh, does he know something we don't? Not that I know of. Jerry, above board on this all the way. Strictly by the book, okay? Of course. First time I've been here, I'll be all right. Good. Up there is where Everett Mann, the eyewitness, was when he says he saw you. Terry's up there now trying to get him to come down. Where did they find her? Over there by that middle dumpster. This lens has 20 times the resolution of the human eye. Now, I can see the shape and color of the car, but I can't tell whether he's male or female, and I sure as hell can't see his nose. David? Yeah? Pull into the spot and get out. Killer lights. This is exactly how it was on that night. I can't see a thing. Mm -hmm. Is he coming? No, he won't talk to us. Well, listen to this. He says there's a tape of his interview with the cops. <laughs> good, good. Mm -hmm. We have an obligation, a legal, punishable obligation to turn over evidence to the defense. Jerry. All of the evidence. You know what this makes us look like? Why was this even made? It was made because... There is a strategic, evidentiary reason why people do not take witness interviews. And if they do, then they turn them over to us. Jerry, why the hell wasn't this turned over to us? Frankly, Jerry, one of the guys in your office told me to get rid of it. This is great. This is great. He doesn't say he saw your light blue Monte Carlo. He says he saw a dark, mid-sized car. He doesn't say he saw you. He says he saw a nose configuration. He doesn't even ID your picture. He just says the nose resembles yours. I mean, there goes their eyewitness, straight out that window. They said it was broken from the inside. So what does this mean? What does it mean? It means we cream them in trial. Or well, I find who did kill Jacqueline, and we don't go to trial. All I can tell you is what I told everybody else. Robbie Kinney was here. Do you, you keep a schedule here or anything? Uh, Timesheets? Not for Robbie. He, no. he just helps me out now and then. You know, he, he cleans up, he does errands. Uh, that night, he was here all night. Ask them, they'll tell you. What's that? Robbie, where he was the night his niece was taken. Um, he, he was here. And you were both here. Uh, you, you saw him here all night? Yeah. Oh. Do you remember if Rob... Oh. Oh. Are you all right, mister? I... Okay. Oh, here, I'll get you a glass of water. Thank you. I've got a bad 
stomach. You better get that checked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I gotta get it checked. I'll do that. Uh, do you, um... Uh, do, do you remember if Rob left or anything that night? Um... Look, uh, Robbie was uh, kind of like um, a, a fixture around here, you know? Um, you might not know if he left for a while. So, so then he could have left. Uh, are you okay? Uh, you, uh, you recall anybody else who might have been here that night who could be helpful? Um, no, not that I can think of. <laughs> Well, thank you for your help. And the water. It just isn't here. Look, uh, maybe if David, we... you can read all this as well as I can. We're tapped out. Everyone is. The money just isn't there. Nancy says the state's purposely dragging out these extra hearings about Davy. We've got to sell the house. No. Then maybe it would be better to work on getting Davy back when your case is over. Andy says it'll be a lot easier when you're cleared. I'm not leaving my son in an orphanage. And I'm not leaving my son in jail for the rest of his life. We're not selling this house. We'll work it out. How are you going to rob a bank? Win the lottery? Don't mention this to Sin. Don't mention what to Sin? <laughs> I'm better than all right. I'm great. They're giving Davy the rose. Yes. Uh, how much do we get to see him? They'll get him 12 hours a week. That's it? You're lucky to get that much. How's everything else? I'm on to some leads. I mean, with you. No, no, I'm not. I'm, 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 but as a matter of fact, I've got an appointment with Madame Curie. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we're good. You better be. Stupid, but the judge only let us see you 12 hours a week. You mean I go home for 12 hours? No, not exactly. We're not allowed to be alone with you. When can I live at home? Well, Mommy and I have been meaning to talk to you about that. We don't have our house anymore. Someone else lives there now. But Grandma's got a nice new apartment. That's where Mommy and I are living. Where's my stuff? My snow fort? My special toys. Everything's in your new room. Your dresser's here, too. Now, why don't you go with Matt and Johnny and let them show you, OK? Go on. No, I don't agree. I think if people are upset, maybe we should issue some kind of a statement. Let child and family services make a statement. The visitation rights were their decision. We've got nothing to do with it. What's happening with the baby? 
Well, they petitioned for the grandmother to get custody. David's mother? No, Cindy's mom. Apparently, she checks out fine. She meets all the qualifications. She moved to the city a month ago to establish a residence. Well, are they going to approve her? Looks that way. All right, well, let's do our homework and get all the facts straight. And let's find out what's happening with the baby. Morning. Morning. May I answer some questions for you this morning? She looks just like you did, Cindy. Carly Marie? Hey, Nurse Susan. Her name's Carly Marie. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Marie was Jacqueline's middle name. Mm, to take her now. Where? To the nursery with the others. But tell you what, you give me a big kiss, I'll bring her back this afternoon. Uh, I've got to get to the jail. I wanted to tell you earlier, but you were in labor. They've caught the guy from the other break-in. Unfortunately, his fingerprints don't match the unidentified one found on your window. Actually, that was Davies. Now, that doesn't mean it wasn't this guy. And believe me, I'm going to rake him over the coals. But we're still going to trial. For now. I'll keep you posted. He's my favorite policeman in the world. Ours too, pal. Cindy, David. What's the matter? We just got a call from Child and Family Services. They're coming to take the baby. No. Sin. Sin. David? Cindy? He's not taking her. This is Nick Ochner of Child and Family Services. He's not taking her. <sighs> Guys, we worked out a deal. We had a deal. My mother moved back into town to... S Cindy. He's not here to take her, Cindy. Your mother can still have custody, and you guys get eight hours a week, supervised. You just can't be alone with her. Eight hours a week? Can't be alone? My God, look at her. She needs me. We're going to appeal, but for now, this is as good as it's going to get. I want to see Davy before he goes to school. You look exhausted. Why don't you lie down here for a while? You can go see Davy later. Because I only have two hours left this week, that's why. Cindy, no one will know. Yes, they will, Mom. They're watching everything that we do. It's a court order. I am not going to risk losing her. Here, I'll be back later this afternoon. <sighs> Cindy. What? I don't know if I could put up with all you have. You're a good mom. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Hello? Hey, Paul! Daddy's here, too! He's gonna read me Treasure Island tonight. He's on the phone right now. Ooh, that sounds great, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> that was Andy. We're gonna let us live at your mom's with Carly. We can't be alone with her, but we got her 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Are you serious? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> but will I be able to live with you guys? Soon, pal. Really soon. Maintaining their code of silence, David and Cindy Dewall in a controversial pretrial ruling. Prosecutors began their case today by telling the jury that the wall is All rise. You see it? 
this is Kenny. Uh, your son, Robbie, he works at um, um, Louis Restaurant in Harvey. Is that correct? Louis M's Restaurant. Louis M's Restaurant, I'm sorry. Sometimes Robbie worked there, and sometimes he just went there. Oh, I see. And uh, when he was there, is it true that from time to time he would go and pick up a, uh, a waitress named jo uh, Joni Harris? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Sustained. I'm sorry, uh, Mrs. Kinney. Let me start over. Did there come a time when you yourself told your son Rob not to go to pick up Joni Harris at the Islander Apartments where she lived? Yes. And uh, Jacqueline's body was found about a, a building away from where Rob picked up Joni Harris. Is that correct? Objection. The previous objection was sustained. That's hearsay. The jury is instructed to disregard that last question. Your witness. Mrs. Kinney, at any time, did your son Rob know where your granddaughter Jacqueline was living? No. That isn't true. He's come with her to pick Jacqueline up before. Did he even know what Jacqueline's new last name was? Uh, objection uh, to what Rob knew. It's, it's hearsay. I want a sidebar with all the lawyers right now. Your Honor, Rob Kinney is a possible suspect. That's news to me. And if that's part of your defense and you're trying to bring in testimony... It raises reasonable doubt. I... I'm sorry to interrupt you. Andy, if you don't keep your mouth shut, I'm going to ban you from these conferences. <clears throat> I accept your rebuke. Now, you guys raised Rob Kinney. You open the door, you live with the consequences. Objection overruled. So what do we do? Get a new lawyer? Can we do that? Well, you can, but it might not be in your best interest. Besides delaying the trial, it could send the wrong message to the jury. Look, I, Andy's nervous. This is the biggest case he's ever had. He's given himself an ulcer over it. Uh, he'll find his stride. Besides, the state has to bring in hard evidence against you. They don't have it. You didn't do it, and you'll be found not guilty. You don't know that? The state can't prove a lie. You sure about that? Today in court, Edward Mann, who lives at the Islander apartment complex where Jacqueline's body was found, said that on the night of Jacqueline's murder, he saw David DeWallaby. The prosecution's case has so far been loaded with circumstantial evidence and weak on physical evidence. Prosecutors have not even hinted at a possible motive. On the stand today, forensic expert Ralph Meyer testified that the basement window was broken from outside. Prosecutors theorized that a wallabies broke the glass from outside to make it look as though an intruder took Jacqueline. Illinois State Police Captain Alan Peck said that when police told David Jacqueline was dead, David asked if her body had been found in the field. Mr. and Mrs. DeWallaby are confident they'll be acquitted of all charges. They ask that anyone who may know who did kill Jacqueline, please come forward. In court tomorrow, the DeWallabies are expected to be excused when prosecutors show jurors photos of the deceased child. I'm Christy Carter, reporting live from the courthouse. Now, Doctor, could you describe this lower area to the jury, please? <clears throat> yes. Uh, note the thousands of maggots in the groin area. Now, well, this is the remnants of the groin area. And all this is dead necrotic tissue, as well as the surrounding area. This isn't evidence. And Show the time of death. For God's sakes, where's your soul, man? They already testified to that. Now, Have you seen any evidence in this case? Nothing remarkable here. Some nail polish evident right here. Peck told me that that and window was broken the inside. The Their star witness was supposed to be a bombshell. What are you complaining about? This is the story of a lifetime. It's got it all. Family, betrayal, violence. You see yesterday's ratings. The
district manager called me herself about my nose witness story. She said the next time they need a weekend anchor, I have a top. Excuse me. Have you been to that apartment complex at night? The guy saw what he saw. It's our job to report that. It's the black hole of Calcutta. You couldn't see an elephant driving that car. Right here. Naturally, you remember, the body was moved. Now, could we go back to that first slide again, please, Doctor? David, I'm Paul Hogan, Channel 12 News. Yeah, I know. Don't worry, I'm not cornering you. You won't talk? I don't blame you. Just for the record, you are really being screwed. Hey, yeah, you think so? You mean by you guys or Harbin? You think we're being screwed reporter? You're a reporter, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Or would it hurt ratings too much? I want your pity. It was a calculated, dramatic end of the prosecution's case, and yet another day of strictly circumstantial evidence. If the state intended to shock the jury with this tactic, they succeeded, giving jurors the weekend to ponder some very vivid and perhaps inflammatory images. She has Jacqueline's eyes, doesn't she? Yeah. You know, I told Davy that tomorrow we could spend the whole afternoon with him. I asked him what he wanted to do, and he said, uh, I don't know, maybe just stay home. He calls Rose's home now. Hey, we'll get him back soon when this is all over. What do you think's gonna happen? Well, they haven't presented any real evidence yet. I'm scared, David. I think Andy's been doing a lot better lately. Everything's gonna be okay. Next week, we'll present all our evidence, and then we'll just get up there ourselves and tell them the truth. What are you saying, that we shouldn't testify? Look, we don't believe the state's proven its case. But if we don't testify, won't it seem like we're hiding something? That's a risk, but all we have to do here is establish reasonable doubt. We think we've already done that. And in a way, you do have something to hide. Like what? Your two pot convictions. I was 17 years old. It doesn't matter. You've admitted that you still use sometimes, and they'll bring that in. It'll affect your credibility with the jury. Right now, we feel we're in pretty good shape. Look, I really think that we should testify. We're going to bring witness after witness to impeach what they've brought. We've got the window guy, the forensics guy. Our daughter was murdered. A jury should know what we have been through, what it's done to us. They should hear the truth from us. You want to go on? We'll put you on. But they are just waiting to tear you apart, David. John, what do you think we should do? I think you can get hurt either way. It's a difficult call. Ultimately, you're the ones who have to decide. You. And did you tell David where you felt Jacqueline would be found? Yes, I did. I told him in weeds and grass, in a field. Thank you. Witness is excused. All right. Mr. Linton, Mr. Summers, do you wish to call further witnesses? Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, David Duallaby rests his case. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, Cynthia Duallaby rests her case. All right, then. State? We have nothing further. And that is the end of evidence. The jury is in recess.
I've had under consideration the defense motions for directed acquittals of both defendants. It is my position that in the case of Cynthia DeWallaby, there is insufficient evidence to go to the jury. Cynthia DeWallaby's case is discharged as she is released from the courtroom. Yes. Please. It is also my position that there is sufficient evidence in David DeWallaby's case to go to the jury. Closing arguments begin in 15 minutes. Court's recessed. All rise. How could this be? Don't worry, we're gonna get me off too. Now you go get Davey and you bring him home. Oh, well, 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 guys, you don't get Davey back now. You're free of the murder charges, not the child abuse. That's a whole separate case. What do we have to do? Right now, let's just wait for the jury. Oh, unreal. Prosecutors believe that while David drove off to dump Jacqueline's body at the Islander Apartments, Cindy stayed home and washed the bed sheets in which they'd murdered Jacqueline by tying her down and... Oh. Isn't it time for us to fight back? Say something. I mean, she's been acquitted. Let's get David acquitted, too, and then we can come out with our guns blazing. You're gonna get off, you know. You have to. The jury's been in there three days, then. Just imagine what it'd be like out there without all this. All we'll have to worry about is paying everybody back. No, first we're gonna go away somewhere. Where there's a lake and we can take Davy fishing. Mmm. Fresh trout, camping, making love under the stars. Well, everybody, they've reached a verdict. You ready? All right, let's do it. jury find the defendant David Duwallaby guilty of first degree murder we the jury find the defendant David Duwallaby guilty of concealment of a homicidal death please no please no how could this happen how could you do this going to be okay.
you believe in God, John? Yes, I do. So how can he do this? I don't know that God's ways are for us to understand. I do know that he doesn't give us tests that we can't pass. I know the feeling of not being able to go on. I certainly would like life without my cancer. But I either have to choose to live with it or stop living. I don't know how to live with it. I'm looking into some old leads. I'm going to find Jacqueline's killer and get David out. We made a mistake not talking to the media, didn't we? You know, I mean, we should have told our story. We should have told everyone the truth. It doesn't matter what they would have done with it. But we listened to Andy and Terry. I, I think I have to take some of the responsibility for that. And now it's too late. It's never too late, Cindy. Come on. Two years ago, my doctors gave me a few months to live. And here I am, aren't I? So what can I do now? I think I know someone you could talk to. David Protest. He's a professor at the School of Journalism. It's hot. Thanks. Can't miss coffee. I think that's right. So have you seen David yet? I've talked to him, but uh, they say that I can't see him for another couple of weeks. How is he? He's numb like I am. Mr. Protest. Dave. This trial wasn't just in the courtroom, was it? No, it wasn't. You know, whenever we talk to the media, they just twist it around everything that we said. That's why our lawyers told us to stop. Was there anyone that you felt was fair to you? Yeah, uh, this guy on um, Channel 12. Hogan, Paul Hogan. Yeah. I've worked with him. So what can we do now? If you think the media killed the truth, then they can resurrect it again. And get David out and my kids back? You still have an appeal. And you can help us. Maybe. But first, I want to know the truth. The whole truth. From you. I'd have to talk to David. If I can give you some free advice, if you don't have 100% confidence in your lawyers, then get a new one. If you're interested, I can give you some good appeals people. Do you believe we're innocent? I'm not sure. Let me get up to speed on the case. If this were a credit check, they'd be AAA. I've talked to the friends. I've talked to the neighbors. You know that Cindy babysat for half the street after she was accused of murder. You were there. Did anything come out of the trial? No, the state's case was as weak as it looked. What's all this? Oh, I've been trying to figure it all out. You put it all together from the beginning. Well, let me help you. This is what I think happened. That's right. It's the day they were accused. Flip it open. They had to solve this case, and the timing was perfect. I haven't seen Robert Kenny in a long time. When you did see him, was it here? No. Look, I already told everything I know, all right? You told some investigators that Robbie picked you up here and dropped you off here from work. Yeah? Well, they got that wrong. Miss Harris, a little girl's body was found right beside you that. You think I don't know that? Look, I quit Williams' restaurant a month before that happened. That's not what your manager says. 
What do you want, mister? Did Robbie Kinney pick you up here and drop you off here around the time of the murder? Maybe I got my dates mixed up. I gotta get to work. I want to talk to them, David. I trust them, they want to help. Yeah, help mess up my sentencing. I don't think the state's gonna come back with more lies. Protest knows a good appeal attorney. He's from a big downtown firm. His name's Bob Byman. He can help. Yeah, everyone wants to help. You know why appeal attorneys in here? You know who go around talking about their appeal lawyers? The lifers. They live off these guys. It's their bread and butter. He'll take his pro bono, David, for free. We can get the kids back, be a family again. You want to get the kids back, Cindy? You want to be a family again? Yes. Leave me. What? You heard me. You're married to a convicted murderer. They're not going to give you custody. David. That's what I want. Leave me. Take the kids and go. Get on with your life. Get on with your life, Cindy. See this. Cindy. This is incredible. This, this is terrific. Oh, ha have a seat. Our, our phones have been ringing off the hook. You told us not to speak. You told us not to speak to anyone. We did what we thought was best at the time. Well, it wasn't. People thought that we weren't talking because we were guilty. The jury thought that we weren't talking because we were guilty. Hey, who got you off here? My husband is in jail. Now, we paid you over $55,000, and now you send me a bill for $53,000 more? Cindy, please, sit down. Look, money's one of the things we want to talk to you about. But with a case like yours, a story like this... No, my case is over. And so is yours. Yeah, great. <laughs> I can't believe the response. Protest says that people are calling in their support and some leads, too. Protest and Hogan are looking into them. And they think that we might be able to get the state to drop the abuse charges. Huh. Public opinion can sway this for you. I want David to talk to them, too. Yeah, I'd like David to talk to me. I'll go out there to see him this weekend. The doc says I can be out of here by Friday. All right, come on, don't worry. I'm fine. They have me fill with so many painkillers, I can't feel anything now. I'm gonna get your killer for you, Cindy. I am. Uh... Cindy! What's the matter? What is it? Someone called the station. An anonymous tip. They said that they were sending over something I should see. It's Davey's medical records from Palmas Field Hospital. Scars, cuts, bruises, you name it. This isn't true. I have never hit my son. We've never hit him. I think the caller was a cop. They want you to know who you're playing with. If they can't get you for Jacqueline, they will for David. You said that they would do this. Strike back. So are you going to put this on the news? We're not. They're juvenile medical records. But if he got them, that means everyone else did. And someone will go with this. 
While Cindy DeWallaby has been actively seeking custody of her children, this medical chart shows 17 suspected abuse marks found on Davy upon his admission to Palmersfield Hospital. The diagnosis by Dr. Sharon Archer, physical abuse and possible sexual abuse by Cindy. I don't get it. Davey, listen to me. You're gonna hear people say things, bad things. Now, these men are friends. I want you to tell them the truth. I want you to tell them if we ever hurt you or Jacqueline. They don't hurt us, we get time out. Davey, anything that you can think of, anything, tell them. Once, I yelled, and my dad grabbed me real hard by the arm, but he didn't mean to. We're not the ones you have to convince. Those pictures don't even look like me. They don't look like anybody. Davey, didn't you tell me that they took real pictures of you? Real pictures? Photos with a camera? Yeah, lots. But they weren't doctors. They were policemen. The photographs were taken by the Chicago police without Dr. Archer's knowledge. Davy DeWallaby was not abused. How to explain these in the light of doctor-prepared records detailing bruises, wounds, lacerations? The photographs speak for themselves. Anything else was influenced by what officials wanted Palmersfield Hospital to believe. If you're going to try us again, Mr. Gordon, then this time get the evidence straight. The photographs show that the wounds in Dr. Archer's drawings either did not exist at all or were greatly exaggerated. Little Davy DeWallaby had nothing more than just the normal marks that kids get. This is the kind of trial outside court we put up with from the beginning. It's the worst nightmare parents can be put through. Hey, DeWallaby. You got a visitor. TV star. It looks like you. Davy. Hi, Dad. I miss you, pal. You're skinny. Yeah, well, the food's not so good here, Davy. <laughs> Wanna talk to Dad? I'm getting on with my life. I love you, Sam. We're gonna get you out of here. Aren't we, Davy? Yeah. And we're gonna get the kids back with us. David, I fired Andy and Terry. Andy told me he came by. He promised he'd bring someone else to the hearing with him. He isn't doing the hearing. He said he already made a motion to overturn the verdict. You told him you'd use him? David, he is using us. Just like everyone else, can't you see that? This isn't for you, it's for him. This is the biggest case of his life. This woman he's bringing, she's a specialist. He thinks we've got a really good shot. I want to stick with him. And I want you out of here. I don't understand, why are you doing this? Do you want to stay in here for the rest of your life because you didn't wake up that night? I didn't wake up either, David. And somehow, we've got to find a way to live with that. Live, not die away in prison. David, please, at least talk to protest and Hogan. Look, Andy doesn't think that I should... David! Please. This used to be the last stop. Look, this is where they put the chair, right here. Don't worry, they've taken the wires off. Yeah. All right, this is just some ground rules I want to say. No. No ground rules. There's nothing I don't want to answer. Great. I could be here in jail for the rest of my life. That's very hard for me to accept. But that's not the worst thing that ever happened to me. What happened to my daughter was the worst. The only thing I did wrong was I didn't wake up and save my daughter. She would have expected me to be her hero. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish to God I woke up that night. 
But I didn't. I'm guilty of that. If that's why I was here, I could accept it. Dr. Murphy? Dr. Michael Murphy, radiology. Dr. Murphy, radiology. Dr. Tyrell, Dr. Eric Tyrell, ER staff. Charlotte. Where's John? Is he up? He went this morning, about two hours ago. Charlotte, I'm sorry. We'd said our goodbyes. Last night, he, he said he was sorry he couldn't help you. But at least he'd know who the killer was. He said he was going to meet Jacqueline, and she would tell him. First thing this morning to come to a meeting, right? I see. The big guys are not too pleased with my Duwallaby coverage. They've been getting some negative feedback. Just like my meeting with the dean. He doesn't like my involvement in the case. He's upset with the disturbance it's causing. It seems you TV guys have been parking in a spot. Are you surprised? No. Why don't you have a word with Charlotte? We'll go poll the jury. Okay. This is the last one. Mrs. Mason? Yes. Hi, I'm David Protest. I sent you a letter. This is Paul Hogan. I really don't have anything to say. Mrs. Mason, did you read any of my articles in the Daily Sentinel or watch any of the Channel 12 coverage? Yes, I have. Are you aware that the defense has filed motions to overturn the verdict? I think Judge Needham is a really fair man. Let's see what he does. The motion for acquittal is denied, as is the motion for a new trial. Mr. Linton, Ms. Dean Franks, you argued your motion superbly, but Mr. Duwallaby opted for a jury trial, and I do not think it would be appropriate now for me to rethink what they decided. Mr. Duwallaby, do you wish to say anything before sentencing? Your Honor, the only thing I can tell you that, that my lawyers haven't is who Jacqueline was. They didn't know her. Jacqueline was beautiful. She was warm and pure. And she had the right to live. I did not kill my daughter, Your Honor. I loved her, and I will love her always. And that's the truth. Okay, you can return to your counsel. David Duwallaby, for the concealment of Jacqueline Duwallaby's homicidal death, you are sentenced to five years in the Illinois Department of Correction. And for the murder of Jacqueline Duvallaby, 40 years consecutive. You have 30 days to appeal. No bail. Mrs. Mason? 
Are you all right? Listen, do you want to come up? I haven't slept a night since the trial. He didn't do it, did he? I don't think so. Oh, God. What happened in that jury room? Amanda, that long-haired one and her little gang, I just, I just didn't stand up to them. And there were others who weren't sure either, but if you said anything, they just shouted you down. When they read that verdict and said guilty, I was passed out. I don't know why I didn't, you know, jump up and yell, no. I just didn't have the guts. I'm going to be dead by the time he gets out of jail. I could have caused him this trial. He would have had another jury now. He doesn't even have it. Maybe he does. I don't believe this man murdered his daughter. Experts call the recantation unusual, but say that that would not be enough to overturn the verdict. That, however, is exactly what juror Susan Nason would like to have happen. I have to live with this thing forever. I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to sleep again. This is exactly what we've been looking for. Hello? It's Hogan. He says the station phones are ringing off the hook. Yes! <laughs> David, call Bob Byman. Now is the time to change lawyers. Andy and Ellen are trying to get me out on bond. Protest says the state's attorney's office is taking a lot of heat. People are talking, rethinking things. What we're doing is working. We can't take any chances. And we're not. Ellen thinks the you appeals... You've got 45 years. The judge said she argued superbly. No one would have changed his mind. David, we're flat broke. Byman will do this for free. Why? What's in it for him? He never gets cases like this. That's what you said about Andy. I mean where his client is truly innocent. David, please. I got all the John Waters stuff. I'm gonna start going through it. See that? I'll raise you one. What's this? Grand jury transcripts. You're gonna love what Peck and Harvin told him. What are you talking about? Where do I start? Leave it. I told them Everett Mann positively ID'd David. I told him before Jacqueline was found, David called her disappearance for death. The police report said he said accident. David said he said incident. It's unbelievable. Good. They told the grand jury two witnesses saw David's car at the Islander Apartments at exactly the same time he was being interrogated at the police station. That's great. At exactly the same time David was being interrogated at the police station, Cindy was home and the FBI said the car was with her. Captain Peck also told the FBI that David's polygraph test showed no indication of deception because David was probably on drugs. But police blood and urine tests taken the same day showed no drugs in David's system. The grand jury wanted to exercise their right to speak personally with the Dewallabies, but Peck and Harbin steered them away from that idea. The conclusion is inescapable. Under pressure to place the blame somewhere to get the indictments against the Dewallabies, the prosecutors used evidence that later proved false or just never materialized at the trial. This is Paul Hogan, Channel 12 News. Hello? Cindy, it's David. Hi. I tried to call you earlier, but they wouldn't let me talk to you. Listen, Bob Bonham wants a meeting with uh, him, okay? We don't need him, Cindy. We did it. The appeals court's let me out on bond. Come and get me. I'm coming home. Oh, my God. Davey? Daddy's coming home. Davey, Daddy's coming home. Daddy's coming home. Say hi. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> What's going on? They're not letting him out. What? The state fought back. They appealed to the Supreme Court. They reversed the bond order. They didn't give a reason.
They're not letting him come home, Davy. You said he was coming. You promised. I'm sorry. No, no, you promised, you promised, you promised me. I'm Bob Bynum. How do you do? All right. If you'd like me to represent you, David, it would be my honor. You think you could have got me less than 45 years? I think if we'd been on the case in the beginning, you wouldn't be here at all. You're innocent. And you think you can get me out of here? Appeals take a long time. It might be a year, maybe more. First thing I'd like to do is get you moved to a better hotel. You mean some place I can hold my wife and kids? That's the main idea. She's so big. Yeah. Hey, Mary. <laughs> hey, honey, this is your daddy. This is your daddy. Hi, Carly. Hi. He's almost walking. Mm, you smell so good, just like a little baby. He is a little baby. What? Well, oh, honey, I'm your daddy. <laughs> she doesn't get you, too. It's okay. Cindy, here's where we are. Um, Rose? We've given the hotline number to just about every local station, so hopefully we'll get some new leads. Dave? I'm coming. I'm still following up on Rob Kinney. He was John Waters' prime suspect. So far, nothing new. Bob? This is the brief. We filed with the appellate court. We're not seeking a new trial. We're seeking outright exoneration based on insufficiency of the evidence. We also asked them to nullify the indictment because it was obtained through false testimony given to the grand jury. When will we know? Well, that depends on what their schedule's like. But family court's given us next Thursday for your custody hearing. Yeah, now everybody spread the word on that one, okay? I'm gonna be there for a second. Excuse me. She may not have been my own flesh and blood, Cindy, but I loved her. And if I hadn't been out getting smashed that night, and if I'd been down in the basement sleeping. And you can't take the blame. I want you to know that I like you. I like you a lot. I know it's been difficult for me to show you. But I always have.
cake. There's some guys been around asking about the night Jacqueline disappeared. I was here that night, remember? I, I don't remember. You're gonna have to remember. Get away from me. Your Honor, Davy Dwallaby was physically and sexually abused by his mother, and we ask that you not return his custody to her. Your Honor, the state has failed to produce any evidence of child abuse whatsoever. Davy Dwallaby is just a normal little boy who wants his father back, and who has not been allowed to be alone with his mother since the death of his sister three years ago. Carly has never been alone with her mother. It is time to reunite this family. These children should not have to wait another day. Cynthia Dwallaby is capable of uncontrolled violence and rage. This is a preposterous personal vendetta. I couldn't agree with you more. I've heard more than a score of witnesses, and there is no credible evidence of abuse. I find that Cynthia Dwallaby is a fit, willing, and capable parent. Granting custody to Mrs. Dwallaby is in the best interests of her children, and it is so ordered. Your Honor, the people of Illinois... The people of Illinois direct you to sit down, Ms. Ross. Your Honor, may the Duarte be permitted to embrace. Motion to her, granted. <laughs> Coming home next, Dave. It looks just like David. His name's Roy Padecki. And guess where he hangs out and what he drives? A dark, mid-sized car at the Islander Apartments? Bullseye. Where did you get this? Somebody called the 800 number. And what are you going to do with it? Hogan and I, we're going to pay a little visit to Everett Mann. The testimony of Everett Mann was the only significant difference that led a judge to declare Cynthia DeWallaby not guilty and allowed a jury to find her husband guilty. Tonight, that crucial piece of the state's largely circumstantial case is gone. Saying it could definitely have been Roy Padecki that he saw, Everett Mann has signed this statement repudiating his testimony at the trial. Even more remarkable, Mann says he told prosecutor Jerry Harbin before the DeWallaby trial that if he had been shown a picture of Harbin's own nose, he would have identified it. Tomorrow the case goes before the Illinois Appellate Court. The Dwallaby family asks that anyone with any information about what happened to Jacqueline, please contact the hotline number, 1-800-555-DAVE. 1-800-555-DAVE. Why would the waitresses lie? You got a job, you want to keep it. Your boss asks you to tell someone something and you do it. Now, Mitch and Rob, they, they got this father and son kind of thing. Mitch probably thinks that Rob didn't do it and is trying to protect him. And you're positive that Rob was not there that night? My husband had just passed away and I couldn't sleep. I was at the restaurant from 10 at night until 6 in the morning. Robbie never came in. Why didn't you come forward until now? I was scared. I've got a little girl, same age as Jacqueline. And two days after Jacqueline disappeared, I did see Robbie. Hey, Robbie. How's the great spirit? The great spirit's great. Yeah. Remember when I told you a sacrifice had to be made? Sacrifice young and pure? Yeah. Well, a sacrifice has been made. Robbie, you're nuts. Hey, Kate. You know, I wanted to talk to you. you. Hi, Robbie. Hey. You're getting so vague and pretty, aren't you? You were here all night, Friday night, right? Yeah. 
it. I was here. What about it? I need a favor. What kind of favor? Stuff was on TV. Robbie told my brother Rocky. I've killed before and I can do it again. Rocky was at the restaurant that night, too. He knows Rob didn't come in. He's kind of social with him. Do you think he could set up a meeting for us with Rob? green the spirits here and if they're brown the spirit's gone well right now they're green can you tell us what the spirit knows about Jacqueline's death That's all the spirit talking, though. Um, I didn't say nothing. I'm, David DeWallaby did it. I just um, released information. Release some more. The light in Jacqueline's closet was on, but the light in her room was off. Her bed wasn't made, and she had on pajamas. Her comforter was bluish purple with maybe a bit of yellow or green. And her underpants were yellow with unicorns. She peed on herself. Excitement from the struggle made her pee. Her head was pointed north, northeast. And one of the gold cross earrings was ripped out of her hair. But this is, um, this is all the spirit talking. You understand. And maybe people didn't see me in the restaurant that night because I was invisible. The spirit can help me do that. I was, I was here physically, but um, no one could see me. But spirit did tell me where the body was. And something pulled me there like a, like a driving force. I, I didn't see the body though. Just smelled it. I was just scared to look at it. 
but I know from the spirit that right around her Adam's apple she had a rope burn around her neck and one of her fists was balled up and she had bruises all over her body. She took a lick and it kept on ticking. Hello? Oh my God. In a startling legal development today, the Illinois Appellate Court has set free David DeWallaby, saying the no, trial no. court that convicted him of murder 18 months ago had erred in its decision. Cindy, David! David, David. how do you feel? Well, it's hard to believe right now. I'm very happy. But I'm the proudest of my wife. She's a real fighter. She never quit. This thing's not going to end until we find out who killed Jacqueline. Thank you. The best part is the appellate court tossed the case out, didn't order a retrial, and the state Supreme Court refused to review the case. They didn't send you free. Hey! Hey, hey, there's Paul. Channel 12 spoke to appellate court justice Dom Rizzi about the decision. It's the function of the appellate court to prevent an injustice. Now, this All case right. never should have been prosecuted. It was a waste of the taxpayers' money. That was, however, an opinion not shared by City Hall. Well, I guess appellate courts can do whatever they want. Maybe we should do away with juries. <laughs> this is Paul Hogan, Channel 12 News. Hey. Oh, Paul, thank you. Paul, thank you. Thank you for everything. I don't know how I could ever repay you. Ding, 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 ding. I'd like to propose a toast to, uh, to David and Cindy, to a lifetime of happiness and security, and to everyone. Lawyers, journalists, friends, we all came together to make this remarkable day possible. You all stood up to be counted when someone needed you. And to uh, John Waters. I know he would have loved to have been here. Here. Cheers. 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 Now what's gonna happen? Well, as soon as we can, we're gonna take a trip. How would you like to go camping and fishing? Yeah! Well, that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna go back to work and I'm gonna pay back everyone who helped us out. I'm gonna find a new place to live and we're gonna start our lives over again. How does that sound? I love you, Dad. I love you too, pal. Uh -huh. How does it feel to be able to put your kids to bed again? Unbelievable. You have no idea. I thought I'd never get to do it again. <laughs> hey, guys. Whoa, hey. Um, hey, I think uh, we should be getting out of here. Yeah, yeah, we thought we'd give you guys a break. Uh, we'll get into things tomorrow. Uh, no. Look, I want to know something. How do we find out who did this? What's happening with Rob Kenny? But I 
know from the spirit that right around her Adam's apple, she had a rope burn around her neck, and one of her fists was balled up, and she had bruises all over her body. She took a lick and we kept on ticking. given a transcript of this to the state's attorney's office, along with five affidavits saying that he wasn't in the restaurant that night. The police say they'll investigate, but so far they haven't done much, and frankly, we don't think they will. Why not? There's no physical evidence. The case is old. They think the statement's not credible. And even if it was, he could get off with insanity. Plus, it's embarrassing. It makes him look bad. They told the public it was you. Isn't there something we can do? Yes, there is. You can make a decision. You can let this shadow hang over your lives forever. Or you can get on with your new life. Look to your future. a little one. We're going to throw it back. So he can grow up. That's nice, Davey. Come on, let's go. I'm Dave Wallaby, and that was our daughter, Jacqueline. And Carly really does look quite a bit like her. Since David's release from prison in 1991, there has still been no one charged with our daughter's murder. We live day in, day out with no closure to our ordeal, as do many other couples whose children have been abducted and murdered. No one can bring back murdered children, but you can help end their family's ordeal. If you have any information about an abducted child, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Thank you.